Hello, I am Antoine Lofton, Vice President of Human Resources, and I'd like to welcome you to the first installment of a video series called New in Duke Blue, where I have the privilege of introducing new Duke leaders to our community. Today, I am joined by my friend and colleague, Alec Gallimore, who became Duke's Provost and Chief Academic Officer last year. Alec was previously Dean of Engineering at the University of Michigan, and he is a leader in his field. Literally, he is a rocket scientist. Welcome, Alec. It's so nice to have you here with us today. Thank you. It's wonderful for me to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. So people are dying to know. Share with us a little bit about your personal life and what impacted you on becoming the person you are today. Well, I'll start with my parents who were um, incredible role models for me. They emigrated from the island of Jamaica um, to come to the United States for their education. And in fact, when I was born and my younger brother were born, they were undergraduates studying college at Howard University. And they proceeded to go and get their advanced degrees and um, during that time, though, I would have a number of family members babysit us. And one of my babysitters was my dad's sister, my aunt, Aunt Joy. And she was studying architecture at the time, but she loved science fiction. And so we would watch Star Trek together. She took me to see 2001 Space Odyssey. And then when she realized that I became interested in science fiction at an early age, she would send me books, mm -hmm. uh, Isaac Arzimov and others. And then that led me to this interest in becoming, um, if you will, a rocket scientist or an aerospace engineer. Well, we are definitely happy to have you here with us. So that leads me to uh, the next question for people that are still trying to figure out what does that mean? What does the role of the provost do? That's a good question. I'm trying to figure <laughs> that out too. Uh, all kidding aside, um, undergraduates will ask me that. And I start by saying, you all know what a president does and who President Vincent Price is. They go, yeah, yeah, I said, well, his parking spot is 001. Mine is 002, right, as a starting point. And all kidding aside, um, as the chief academic officer, in a, from a corporation point of view, it'd sort of be like a chief um, operating officer. And so my, the deans, I work with the deans directly, the center directors directly. Uh, I work with leaders such as you. And my job is always to represent the academic mission of any decision making uh, we, we get into. Vincent uh, Price, the president, and I work hand in glove in terms of setting direction of the university. But he turns to me to make sure I'm representative of the interests of the faculty, that I have the interests of the, our, our students and the trainees are the foremost of any decision making we're doing as well, our research enterprise as well. Uh, the outreach that we do as well, both here in North Carolina and globally, and that we have a great and strong um, community of centers and institutes, because one of the things that really differentiates, uh, differentiates Duke from many of our peer institutions is our interdisciplinary superpower, and that resides not only in the academic units, but also across the units and centers and institutes. And so I have the... Um, the privilege of being able to help navigate that amazing uh, complex. Wonderful, wonderful. And thank you so much for sharing uh, the history as well. If you can, I know that professional development is extremely important to you. We've had numerous meetings on that topic. Share a little bit about in your career, what were some of those milestone moments or little nuggets that was dropped into your life that has added to that commitment of professional development as you're pushing Duke forward? Well, um, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll start a little bit with um, what I learned as from my parents that has shaped my career. Uh, one is um, I'm an optimist and I think that has served me pretty well. And I also am optimistic where I do firmly believe that people are inherently good and I give them the benefit of the doubt, um, if you will. And, and so that means that when I engage in any type of interaction with other people, I do it from a spirit of, you know, how do we get to yes, trying to be respectful of your point of view and also wanting to hear you and hear your point of view as well 
and then have a nice, respectful exchange of things. Mm -hmm. You know, if I look at Duke University writ large, I think we've demonstrated an ability to do that that's uncanny through myriad ways. But I feel that that's really something that I embrace as an individual. So Nuggets um, would be giving an opportunity to um, demonstrate leadership, but also learning from really great leaders. Even, you know, being on committees, seeing how exemplar leaders, you know, work with the people they have. They're not the ones who talk the most. They're the ones who listen the most, those type of things. Uh, training programs that I've gone to. Uh, when I was at the University of Michigan as part of the Big Ten, we would go through uh, Big Ten training programs, very similar to what we do here, the Ivy Plus and the ACC as well. And so I took advantage of that. Uh, I've had a coach uh, for a long time, so I'm a big fan of um, having coaches. And in fact, one of the things I did in my prior institution as dean is we created and expanded our cadre of coaches uh, that we provided um, to not only our senior faculty members, but also associate professors and staff members as well. So this, this idea of, of seeking support and having somebody that you can work with. But I would say the thing um, that has helped me be the leader that I am today, for what it's worth, has been really the notion of what did I learn by running my laboratory? Mm -hmm. uh, my lab, at one point, we had about 15 or so researchers or so. We had to set a vision. We had to be able to communicate a vision. We had to inspire people. We had to work with a diverse and talented um, background group of people who we need to not treat them uniformly, that is, we want to be equitable, but we understand that there are different ways of working mm -hmm. with people different, based on their personalities and so on and so forth. Um, how do you uh, put bread on the table, right? The sure. idea of fundraising and so on and so forth and those type of nuggets, if you will. And so for me, some of those nuggets associated with that was getting the, the right people. Culture is the most important element that we have in terms of reinforcing what we're trying to do having a vision and a mission that's compelling because it's been one that's been built not by the leader, but by the people who are going to be engaged in, in essentially fulfilling that vision, if you will. And then being consistent and rules-based, um, you know, being very, very much one based on we're going to have these structures in terms of how we do things. And these structures are going to be uh, driven by our North Star, which is our values and our guiding principles. Wonderful, wonderful. One of the questions that our viewers always ask, so I have to ask you this question, why Duke? You have a very impressive CV, resume, you can go anywhere. What attracted you to Duke University? Well, um, I, I'll start with uh, the president, Vincent Price. Uh, we've known each other for a number of years and um, I met him um, when he was the provost at the University of Pennsylvania and I think we clicked right from the get-go, actually. It was great. So I, I, I followed him when he moved from Penn to Duke. I was very excited to get the presidency and so on and so forth. But then when this position opened up, a number of people who I trust contacted me and said, you and Vince would be a great team. Um, Duke has a culture that is very much aligned with what you have at the University mm -hmm. of Michigan. In some respects, Duke is a perfect, perfect place for you to be as a provost. The provost job at Duke is one, it's a very fulfilling job, it's a meaningful job, if you will. And Duke is just an amazing institution that is young, energetic, hungry, and think that would be a great place for you to go for the next stage of your career. And I tell you, um, you know, 14, 15 months in or whatever it's been, it's, it's been just amazing in that regard. So one year into it, what's next? What are those couple of top priorities that are exciting for you to work on right now? Well, um, so one is the notion of, um, I would say, academic freedom and responsibility, free expression, pluralism, and belonging. That's a mouthful, I understand that. But 
really where it, where it boils down to, and it's very much related to the notion of diversity, equity, inclusion, which is, I firmly believe, and my experience so far has really reaffirmed this, that to do the very best work, be it in the classroom, be it in the laboratories, patient care, what have you, outreach, um, it doesn't make any sense to not capitalize on all the talent and life experiences we have at our disposal in a synergistic way. Uh, many of the things that we were able to do in my own laboratory, which were really extraordinary if I do say so myself, would not have been possible if we didn't bring in people with different diverse backgrounds, physicists, chemists, aerospace engineers, but also different life experiences and points of views. And if you put those elements together in a very cr way that's synergistic and inclusive, magic happens. Mm -hmm. And so how do we do that and continue to do that at Duke University? And so that's an area that we focused on. You know, we created the, the Provost Initiative in the Middle East as a, as a test bed, if you will, as a, as a use case, um, taking the horrific um, Israeli-Palestinian uh, war that's been raging since October, but using that as an opportunity to demonstrate an ability of bringing in people with different pers points of view, but showing that they can work with each other, communicate with each other, if you will. And that's just one example, and there are many other activities that we do here at Duke and programming going forward that I want to make sure that we continue to do things. And then I'll just, a second one is the notion of how do we continue the ascension of Duke University as a true academic powerhouse. And um, certainly building on our biomedical excellence or um, excellence of humanities and the professional schools and whatnot, you know, world-class, best in the country, undergraduate experience and things like that. But areas that we can look at or maybe on the graduate side of things, um, how do we continue to be truly interdisciplinary, but also thinking about those disciplinary areas that we need to strengthen and investigate more? And then some some obvious things associated with acad um, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, associated with the physical sciences, and so on. Areas that you know our community is saying we want to to invest more in, and we're looking into how to do those things. Well, it looks like we have a full year ahead and we're very thankful for everything that you've done already. We are happy to have you at the helm. As stated earlier, I am Antoine Lofton, VP of Human Resources, and you now know who's new in Duke Blue. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you very much.